Okay, so lesson two, three today, we're going to be explaining number puzzles. And these are kind of those trick puzzles that maybe you've seen before, or they tell you to do a whole bunch of math, and then they can predict what number that you're going to be at. Um, you could kind of call it like they use it like a magic trick or something like that, but we're going to use algebra to kind of prove why these things work and how come people can predict what number that you're going to end up with after you do all these crazy things. So the big idea today is algebra explains why many number puzzles work and how to invent them. In your homework tonight, you're going to have to make up your own. And if you kind of understand the process algebraically, it's really easy to make your own up as well. So no vocabulary words today. We're just going to kind of walk through these puzzles and then try and come up with the algebra to prove why they work so we can fully understand them and then maybe even make our own. So example number one, this one is called double trouble. And the reason is, if you get down to the bottom, we're going to start with any number we want. And in the end, our answer should be twice the original number. So that's the trick to this one, double trouble. So let's just pick a random number. So I'm going to start with 20. Now, I kind of cheated a little bit looking ahead because I saw that it was subtract 11. So I didn't pick a really small number that I was going to end up in the negatives. So I picked a number that was big enough that when I subtract 11, I have something nice. So I'm at 20. If I subtract 11, I'm at 9. If I multiply by 3, I'm at 27. Now I have to add 5 times my original number. So my original number is 20. 5 times 20 is 100. So i got to add 100 to this. So 127. Add 1 to that, 128. Divide by 4. Okay, so I'm dividing this by 4. You can use your calculator that comes out to 32. Add 8. I'm at 40. And this whole puzzle says your answer should be twice your original number. My original number was 20. Now I'm at 40. So it worked. So I want to give you a minute. Pause the video. Take your own number and run it through here and see if it works for you. Okay, so hopefully you see that it doesn't matter what number you pick here, it's going to work. And so let's prove why this is going to work. Let's use algebra. So we're going to pick a number and we're going to represent it, the fact that it could be any number in the world. So we're going to use a variable to represent it. So I'm going to use the letter N just because that's kind of what we use now with the terms, but you could use X or Y. So you pick any number you want and it's N. Think about what we should be ending up with here at the end. If it should be twice the original number, it should be 2n if this is going to work. So we got to get from here to here. And we're going to kind of just do a whole bunch of stuff in the middle just to make it kind of look kind of crazy. And that's kind of what makes this a trick. So first thing we're going to do is subtract 11. So if I take n and I subtract 11, what does that look like? That would be n minus 11. Now, this is where I'm at now. I'm not at n, I'm at n minus 11. So I'm going to multiply this, what I have now, by 3. So I wouldn't write 3n here. That would be multiplying the original by 3. I'm taking this number, because if you go back to here, I didn't times the 20 by 3, it's the 9. So this expression is getting times by 3. So how am I going to write that? Well, that's going to be 3 times n minus 11. Now, let's simplify this because it's going to make our life easier. So let's distribute 3 times n and then 3 times a negative 11. So these are equal to each other. This is going to be a little bit easier to work with. Now we're going to add 5 times the original number. So we're going to take this term, first of all, 3n minus 33, and we're going to add 5 times the original number. The original was n. So we're going to add 5n. So what does that make? Well, we can combine like terms. So put those together, and it's 8n, and I still have minus 33. Now i got to add 1. So I'm going to take my finished product here, 8n minus 33, and I'm going to add 1. If I simplify that, I can combine it with the minus 33. So I should have 8n minus 32. Positive 1 gets added to negative 33. I'm at negative 32. Then I divide this whole thing by 4. So 8n minus 
32. The whole thing's got to get divided by 4. Now you can divide each term by 4. If you think about it, we, we can write this divided by 4 like this. And that's when you break it into two fractions. You're allowed to do that. Okay, so you're going to get 8 divided by 4 is 2n. 32 divided by 4 is minus 8. So I'm at 2n minus 8. Again, keeping in mind where I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to get to 2n. I want this finally to represent twice the original number. So how do I get from 2n minus 8 to 2n? Well, i got to get rid of this minus 8, so I'm going to add 8. So 2n minus 8 plus 8. What happens? The minus 8 and the plus 8 cancel, leaving me 2n. So a lot of this middle stuff was kind of just randomness. The second step, you could call it minus 15 or plus 24 and do a whole bunch of different things to it. And then as you get closer to the bottom, if you have an end goal in mind, you just start adding things or dividing by things to get the n or whatever the expression is to be what you want it to be. So if you were making one of these, you kind of have some freedom in here, and then you're just going to look at the expression that you've got and get it to where you want it to be. All right, let's look at example two. So seven is heaven. So you're going to pick any number you want. And then at the end, we're always going to end up with the number 7. So let's see if this works. I'm going to start with uh, 5. Add 1, 6. Multiply by 2, 12. Multiply by 3, 36. Subtract 4, 32. Add 5, 37. And now subtract 6 times your original number. My original number was 5. 6 times 5 is 30, so I'm going to subtract 30 off of this. And look at that. I'm at 7. Why does that work? Let's prove it. So pick any number you want. That's n. Add 1 to it. That's n plus 1. Now multiply that number, so this whole quantity, times 2. So it's going to be 2 times n plus 1. Simplify it. By distributing, so 2 times n and 2 times 1. Now take that and multiply it by 3. So 3 times 2n plus 2. Distribute. 6n plus 6. Subtract 4 from that. So 6n plus 6 minus 4. Well, these are going to just become a 2. So it's 6n plus 2. And now looking ahead, we got to get to a 7, right? So we got to get this 2 to a 7. So that's why we're adding 5. So 6n plus 2, add 5. And now we're going to have 6n plus 7. So close. Now we just got to get rid of 6n, so all we have left is 7. So we're gonna, we want to get rid of a 6n. So we're going to subtract 6 times your original number. The original number was n. So we're going to take our 6n plus 7, and we're going to minus 6 times the original, 6n. Well, when you combine a 6n and a minus 6n, they cancel, leaving you 7. All right, so algebraically, we can prove why these number tricks or number, number puzzles will always work. So today, you're going to practice kind of working through these. Can you prove that these work algebraically, which is what we just did here? And then could you make up your own if you had to?